Revenge is not justice. Let's go talk about restorative justice. Okay, so let's start by talking about what is restorative justice, because you've probably never heard of it. It's not talked about much. And we are often just told that justice is one thing, which is retributive justice. Restorative justice is a means of justice through which you attempt to repair the harm done by criminal behavior as opposed to punishing the perpetrators of criminal behavior. Now, restorative justice is best accomplished through a process that involves all parties involved, not just the perpetrator, but also the affected, whether it be direct victims or the community or all of the above. By making it an inclusive process and involving everybody, it is a process that allows you to actually repair what has been caused by the criminal behavior, as opposed to simply pointing a finger at someone and then punishing them and getting revenge for what they've done. So as you've most likely been either directly or indirectly told your entire life, the only, at least in Western cultures, acceptable way to have justice when something wrong has occurred is retribution. Now, first let's look at what is retribution. Retribution is a punishment inflicted on someone as vengeance for a wrong or criminal act. Vengeance. Revenge. The westernized justice system is based on the concept of vengeance and revenge as a solution for criminal conduct. Now, as an advocate for nonviolent communication as well as the non-aggression principle, it is my view that not only is a retributive justice system not effective at doing what it attempts to accomplish, which is to prevent, stop, or discourage criminal acts, it's actually counterproductive. It has the opposite effect of what you'd intend. Because as I have said before, and I will say many times in the future, anything you attempt to achieve by force, you will always achieve the opposite. This is often the law of unintended consequences. So without going into a deep analysis of the inherent problems in modern Western justice systems, let's look at a simple comparison of the effectiveness and the techniques of restorative justice versus retributive justice. But it's important to point out that I don't view laws as a standard of moral conduct, and I in fact view them as one of either being immoral in their basis or redundant based on what everyone understands of natural human rights. So that aside, let's talk about what the concept of retributive justice is. The concept of retributive justice is that by punishing perpetrators, of criminal acts that you will make an example of them and discourage them from either repeating those criminal acts or by proxy you will discourage other people from doing those same acts because they will not want to be punished the way that the person who was caught got punished. And that's just the kind of like polite conceptual version of it because ultimately in addition to the idea of punishment as a deterrent you also have this inherent underlying feeling of getting revenge for wrongs that have been done. And we're not going to get into exactly how wrong that is, but I think you've already got an idea that even though we've had this retributive justice system fed to us our entire lives, and we've been told that this is the civilized way to handle crimes in our cultures, in our popular media, in our TV, our books, our movies, we have been made, had it made very clear to us that Vigilante justice and revenge is not acceptable. It's not a way to get justice. We've been somehow fed this idea that if we add the step of putting a bunch of people together and letting them collectively decide if someone has done something wrong and then choose a punishment for them somehow elevates it beyond simple revenge is an illusion. It's not actually true. It doesn't change the core of you've done wrong, you will be punished, that will make everybody feel better. So the main argument in favor of retributive justice is if you punish people for committing crimes, then there will be fewer incidences of crime in society as a whole. Now, in addition to the fact that there's no real data to support this theory, 
there's only one thing that we really do know about punishment, and that is from something you've experienced, we've all experienced in our everyday lives, is that people will avoid punishment, but they will not necessarily use that as a motivation not to do what they feel they should do or what they want to do. Let me say that again. People, and you guys know this because you're, pro you're om certainly the same way, right? You will not choose to not do something that you want to do if you think you won't get caught. Let's use an example, a simple example of a child sneaking into the kitchen to steal a cookie from the cookie jar. Now, telling the child that they're not allowed to have a cookie is not going to convince them that there is something moral or unethical about them going and stealing a cookie without permission. And if they feel like they can do it without getting caught, they will. And if they do get caught and get punished, they're not going to learn the lesson, oh, me getting cookies is wrong. They're gonna learn, oh, I shouldn't get punished because if I disobey, I'm going to get in trouble. Now, is this because that child is inherently evil or wrong or they haven't been educated on the moral intricacies of cookie possession? No, it's because the child hasn't been given any actual valid convincing arguments for why they shouldn't want a cookie or why they shouldn't go and take one. The bottom line is that people will always do what they believe is in their own best interest. Now this includes if people are doing things that are selfless for other people, as well as if they're doing things that are self-destructive. You don't necessarily have to agree with why, but in each person's brain, they will only ever do what they think is best for them at the time. And this is completely regardless to what laws are, rules are, if they feel it's best. We know this because laws exist, punishments exist, severe punishments exist, and people still choose to commit crimes. Is it because they're, they don't understand that there are laws, that they don't understand that there's gonna be punishment? No, it's because ultimately, without a convincing argument to make someone internalize the reason why something is right, wrong, or should be done, they will only limit themselves to the extent that they feel like they can avoid punishment. And if anyone, for any reason, feels like something's in their best interest, maybe they want or need something that they cannot afford to buy, if they feel like they can do that without getting caught, then they will steal it. And no amount of laws is going to resolve that issue. This is where restorative justice comes in, because when you actually start to care about the why of people's choices, you can start to empathize and use compassion and figure out how to solve these problems and how to deal with issues that arise with people and interpersonal interactions so that everyone can achieve an outcome that is meeting the needs of all parties involved. Taking one party, placing blame on them, judging them, punishing them, and then placing that burden for their punishment on the community as a whole is just fundamentally not only a really bad and immoral idea that I believe is in violation of the non-aggression principle, it also does not work. Anyone who has looked at the Western justice system has seen that criminals that are put into jail, punished, they aren't motivated to rehabilitate. It doesn't make them better people. People who do wrong, who are never understood for why they made that choice and are summarily punished for it, and told, don't do it again or you'll continue to be punished. Oh, by the way, we're gonna take away some of your human rights and dignities as a further punishment. You're gonna now be a second class part of society because you have been judged to be bad. You'll never understand why they made that choice and you'll never be able to help them understand how to make better choices or how to better meet needs that were unmet when they chose to do what they did. And so this is the core of restorative justice is trying to understand how the actions taken by the criminal have affected everyone, how to restore and repair the damage done by that crime in a way that everyone's needs are met so that even the perpetrator, even the criminal, instead of being judged and labeled as bad and punished, actually can be reintegrated as a healthy member of society by understanding what led to them making the choices that they made. Hopefully this is a good introduction to the concept 
of restorative justice. Hopefully it's going to make you start to rethink the idea of retributive justice as punishment and revenge as a healthy, civilized solution for problems in our societies. If you guys uh, enjoyed this information and are looking forward to me expanding on these topics in the future, be sure to subscribe, uh, like this video if you enjoyed it. If you disagreed, you have really strong feelings on this, which I'm sure a lot of people do, leave comments. I love to discuss these things with you guys, and I will see you in the next one.